as we remain prayerful, uh, we don't entertain fear. Uh, amen. amen. I say we don't entertain fear amen. because we are children of the Most High God. Amen. amen. All right. So are you ready? Yes. Uh, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10. Ecclesiastes for your information is in the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10. I read, I'm reading from the New King James Version. I read, it says, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. I read it again. It says, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm starting a three-part series that I have titled, I've simply titled it Sharpen. Sharpen, and this is part one. And I want you to be very expectant because I have no doubt this series is so loaded. I don't know if we'll be able to be able to exhaust it all in these three days. So I want you to be expectant because the spirit of God will be moving mightily and your lives will not be the same again. Amen. Now, the God that we serve is a moving God. God is always moving. God is not stagnant. God is always moving. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says that, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering or moving upon the face of the waters or upon the deep, the face of the deep of the water. So God is constantly moving. And because God is constantly moving, God expects us to move with him. And I want you to understand that God doesn't move at the speed of light. The speed at which God moves, there is nothing that can measure his speed. We can simply put it that he moves at the speed of the Holy Ghost. Because in the realm of the spirit, the speed that we move at is so, it it's cannot be measured. And it's important that as a child of God, you get ready to move at that speed. Amen. And for us to move at that speed, we have to sharpen ourselves. That's why the Bible says in the scripture we read that if the axe is dull, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge. Notice the Bible never said one should sharpen the whole axe. But the edge of the axe is where it is required to be sharpened. Are you following what I'm saying? So that means if we are going to be an effective Christian, you must look for the axe in your life and sharpen it. So the Bible says that if the axe is dull, so that means if you're going to be an effective Christian who is doing exploits in this year, you cannot be dull. You cannot be dull. Being dull there means remaining stagnant. Anything that is stagnant excuse my language, stinks. Anything that is stagnant becomes a cake. Anything that is stagnant cannot move to where God wants it to move. So the Bible says that if the axe is dull, that's why you can't be dull. Even God hates dullness. He told one of the seven churches, he said, I don't want you to be lukewarm. Being dull is being lukewarm. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why I've always said 
the most problematic people in every church are those who are slow or those who are dull. Slow to follow, slow to hear, slow to fast, slow to give, slow to win souls. They are slow and those who are slow always create confusion in the camp. The same applies if you are dull. If you are dull, when we are moving at the speed of the Holy Ghost, you'll be telling us, wait for me, but we don't have time to wait for you. I told you the days of let's go are over. It's now we are in the days of I'm going. If you want, follow. The days of let's go are over because I know what God has done for me. I know my relationship with God. My relationship with God is not predicated on whether you are hot or cold. My relationship with God is based on what he has brought me out of and where he's taking me to. Are you following what I'm saying? So my Christian walk is not predicated on whether you are dull or sharp. It's predicated on Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says if the axe is dull, if the axe is dull, if your spiritual life is dull, if your relationship life is dull, if your educational life is dull, even if your business is dull, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then look at what happens. The Bible says that then he must use more strength. Anything that is dull requires more strength. Anything that is dull requires what? More strength. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. And unfortunately, Many people pride themselves in the using of more strength. The using of more strength is not wisdom. As a matter of fact, the using of more strength is a sign that there is no wisdom in your life. That's why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, it says, go to the ant, you sluggard. The ant prepares its meal in summer ready for winter. The Bible says that it has no ruler, it has no overseer, but they walk in rank. Are you following what I'm saying? So if you are going to be an effective Christian this year, we must see wisdom demonstrated in your life. So the Bible says if the axe is dull, and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. Wisdom brings success. Other translations will say wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom brings success. So that means when you have wisdom, what is what we will see in your life is success. You can't operate in wisdom and not be successful. So quick question we want to ask is what does it mean to be sharpened? What does it mean to be sharpened? To be sharpened means to make sharper or improve something to make it work better. To make sharper or to improve something to make it work better better. That's why I am constantly looking for ways to make things around me sharper. Are you following me? So, quickly, let's, let's go and uh, let's, let me just quickly tell you a story of we're talking about sharpening of a woodcutter that got a job in a, in, a, in a factory. So once upon a time, a very strong woodcutter, somebody says strong. 
<laughs> a very strong woodcutter asked for a job in a timber merchant and he got it. Is that not a good thing? He got it. And not only that, their pay was really good. The conditions were really great. For those reasons, the woodcutter was determined to do his best. Now, let's say you are the woodcutter. His boss the following day gave him an axe and took him to the forest and said, this session is for you. I want you to cut all this wood here and bring it to the, the timber market for it to be processed. And he was given a time to achieve that target. So the first day, this woodcutter was very excited. And then he went to work with his axe that the boss gave him. So first day he went, he cut 18 trees. And then he came back and he told the boss, today I was able to bring 18 trees. And the boss said to him, well done. Continue that way or go on the same way. The woodcutter was very motivated. And so the following day he went, he, he worked harder. He came back the following day with 15 wood. He went to the boss and said, boss, today I cut 15. The boss said, ah, well done. Continue on that way. The following day he went. He even worked harder this time than the previous time. He came back, 10 wood. He was wondering what's happening. I'm working harder, but my level of productivity is going down. He came to the boss. The boss said, well done, continue that way. The next day he went again. This time he worked very, very hard. You know where we are going? He came back with three. He said, oh, but I'm working harder. So he went to the boss and said, I'm working really harder than the first day. But nothing seems to be working. I'm not getting more trees. The more I work hard, the less trees I get. And so the boss asked, when was the last time you sharpened the axe I gave you? He was shocked. He said, what? Sharpened? I never thought about that. I just wanted to work hard. He said, all I wanted to do was work very hard. Praise God. He said, I had no time to sharpen. That's what many of us do. We're in the same job 10 years. No time to sharpen, working hard. Wake up early in the morning. Rush to work, come back home, rush to bed, wake up in the morning, rush to bed, come back home, rush to bed, wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, rush to bed. It's a cycle. 15 years down the line, you look back and say, oh, oh, I haven't achieved anything. Young people come into that organization who have sharpened their minds, sharpened their skills, and they are promoted above you. They are made managers, and you're wondering, but I've been here longer than them. That's not how it's supposed to do, be done. Many of us don't have time to sharpen our axe. We have been very busy cutting trees. We have been busy working hard. Ten years ago, if you are doing the same job, ten years ago, you were probably paid the same hourly rate as you are paid now. It doesn't mean you are going up. It means you are going down. If you are still 
receiving the same pay you received 10 years ago and, and, and some of us probably our pay grade is gone down probably 10 years ago you were earning 20 pounds an hour or 30 pounds an hour but now there's competition so you are getting 20 something pounds an hour why is that happening you are busy working hard cutting trees you haven't had time to sharpen your axe let's reflect on that our lives are like that man we sometimes get so busy that we don't take time to sharpen our axe in today's world it seems that everyone is busier than ever but less happier than ever why is that? Could it be that we have forgotten how to stay sharp? There's nothing wrong with activity and hard work, is it? There? There's nothing wrong. It's good. Every day when you wake up, people in your community see that you're going to work. You carry your bag, they see you start your car, you go and come. They know this one leaves every day at 7 a.m., comes back at 4 p.m., they know every, every day, Monday to Friday, everybody knows your routine. It's good. But that is not just how God wants you to live. Are you following what I'm saying? Through the act of busyness, we have neglected the importance of sharpening ourselves. Some of us could go on courses. I've told you before, when I went to work in Boots the first time, within six months, I was looking for courses to do. There were people who were there 25 years. I asked the manager. They gave me an opportunity to go and do a pharmacy assistant course. This was many years ago. Then my, my, my hourly rate was about five pounds something or six pounds something. This was in the city. After I did the course and I passed, my hourly rates jumped from six pounds something to nine pounds seventy. This was fifteen years ago. There were people in that organization who were there for twenty-five years who were getting seven pounds an hour. They were very happy. They were very happy. I have always told you, what is chasing you determines how fast you run. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't be happy with where you are. Oh, I'm telling you, this series will provoke you. This is not a praise the Lord, praise the Lord message. It's to provoke you to live here this week and to change something in your life. Amen. To sharpen yourself and refuse to stay the same way you have been all these years. We all need time to relax. We all need time to think. We all need time to meditate. We all need time to learn and to grow. It's important you have to learn and grow. If you don't learn and if you don't grow, you'll become extinct. If we don't take the time to sharpen the axe, we will become dull and lose our effectiveness. And many have lost their effectiveness. So quickly, let's look at four ways to become sharper. Four ways you can become sharper. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17. I read, it says, Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. Iron sharpeneth what? Iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. Four things quickly. Number one, it takes steel to sharpen steel. So the Bible says iron sharpeneth what? Iron. It takes iron or it takes steel to sharpen steel. And anything great in this world is built on Hard steel. Anything great. Look at look around the great bridges, 
that you look around that have been there for years start still number two to be sharpened you must get closer to hard and disciplined people nothing great is built on softness hard anything great anything great Jesus said if if um uh, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Luke chapter 6 from verse 49. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I tell you? And Matthew chapter 7 from verse 40 is something there about. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say to you? Jesus said, if you come to me and hear my words and do them, I will liken you to a man that digs deep and built his house on a rock. But the second man comes, he has, doesn't do. He also comes, he's in the church, he comes to here. But he doesn't do. He goes and builds on the sand. And Jesus said, both of them will be tested. He said, when the storm beats upon that building vehemently, the one that built on sand is building collapse. The same test, the same test comes on both buildings or both builders. The storm, the wind, the flood will come to test your foundation. Have you not seen when there are floods? You see some houses being carried. Have you seen it? <laughs> Those houses were in the same area compared to other houses. Why, why did those houses move and the other houses stayed? One was built on a solid foundation. The other was built on the sand. So to be sharpened, you must get closer to hard and disciplined people. Some of you will say, I mean, you'll, you'll appreciate some of the teachers that gave you character in life are teachers who were hard. Disciplined teachers. Who took no nonsense for an answer. You come back from home, you are given a homework, you don't do your homework, you know what you'll get, praise God. Number three, four ways to be, become sharpened. Number three, to be sharpened, you have to look for people in your field who are sharper than you. You have to look for people in your field, in your field who are sharper than you. You might not like them, but they are sharper than you. Get close to them. Learn from them. Are you following what I'm saying? Learn from them. Get close to them. Anything you criticize moves away from you. If you want to be rich and you see somebody driving a Range Rover and splashes water on you, it's all these people are doing drugs. They are not doing drugs. It's drug money. It's not drug. How do you know it's drug money? Do you don't even know the person. So to be sharpened, you have to look for people in your field who are sharper than you. This is very important. Don't think you are the best in town. There are people who are better than you. Elijah said to God, I'm the mozilious person for you. I'm the mozilious prophet. All your prophets are killed. I'm the only one left. And God said to him, Guy, there are 7,000 who have not bowed. Don't think you are the best. There are others who know the thing better than you. <laughs> I keep telling my wife, there are people God has hidden for the end time in the church. There are people, there are, there are, there are churches who are doing exploits that nobody have heard of. They are not on TV, they are not on radio, but when you go there, there are millions gathering. 
When you go there, their level of excellence is high. You haven't done anything. You know, you say, I'm the best in the world. You are what? Huh. Number four, you must never be satisfied until you become sharper than them. <laughs> you must never be satisfied until you are sharper than those that are sharper than you now. You say, Pastor, is that biblical? We'll look at Psalm 119 from verse 96 to 100. Psalm 119 from verse 96 to 100. Now listen carefully. It says, to all perfection, I see a limit but your commands are boundless. To all perfection, I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. In other words, God's commands, there are no limits. So in your field, if you choose your field and you want to excel and you want to sharpen, there are no boundaries. Are you following me? This is very important. For others, there might be limitation. It says to all perfection, I see a limit. I see a limitation. But your commands are boundless. In other words, when it comes to your word, there are no limit. I go the extra mile. In your chosen field, be the best. Are you following what I'm saying? Be the best. Be the best accountant. Be the best cook. Be the best chef. Be the best driver. Don't be driving your boss and you see a portal and then you go, boom, big portal. And your boss is sleeping in the car. I said, this wicked boss, he's always sleeping in the car. He's sleeping and thinking how to make millions so he can keep you in your job. And then you see a portal and then you go, today I'm going to show him. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Come on. Or you are turning a cave. You can see the person is sleeping and then you turn. Boom. I remember, uh, I think two or three years ago when Pastor Ty and Pastor Nom T came, we decided to drive them ourselves and um, we, we just wanted to drive them. So my wife and I were in the car, they were sitting in the car and we, you know, to drive somebody who is, who is on that level, you, 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 it's like a heavy weight, you know, a heavy load on you. So, you know, I avoided all portals. We were going and everything. And then we were just about to drop them. This was after they've come, everything. They were excited. We were about to drop them. And whilst we were talking in the car, I also got a bit tired. And then um, somebody crossed me and then I braked you know, very sharply. And they were at the back, very tired, obviously, resting. And they moved forward. I felt very bad. I felt so embarrassed. I felt so bad. I learned from that lesson. So the next time when they came, I said, no, we're going to drive them again. And this time, I was very observant. We went to Manchester. Whilst we were going, he was sitting very relaxed. He was sleeping. When you are driving and somebody is sleeping, then you know you are a good driver. Because I learned. Some of you, you don't learn. You don't learn. You see, we have to, you have, every day must be a learning season for you. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. 
Are you following what I'm saying? Every message and how you present it. Every message is different. So I, I can't preach every message the same way. Are you following what I'm saying? So learn to sharpen yourself in that area of your calling. Psalm 119 verse 97. It said, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. How can you be sharpened if you are not meditating on your field of calling? How can you be, how can you stay sharp if your field, you, you don't care, you, you don't meditate on it, you, you don't, you don't, you don't study, you don't do anything. And all you care about is like that woodcutter, cutting using his strength. No, you can't, you can't be sharp. To be sharpened, you have to love what you do. He said, oh, how I love your law. And I meditate on it how long? All day long. All day. The next verse, verse 98 of Psalm 119. It says, your commands are always with me. And make me wiser than my enemies. Oh, that's powerful. Your commands are always with me and they make me wiser than my enemies. You see, that's why I said earlier that to, to be sharpened, you have to look for someone who is sharper than you to go and learn from. David's, David is saying that your commands are always with me and they make me wiser than my enemies. Don't go and say, oh, as for me, I have no enemies. Everybody loves me. Oh, everybody loves me. Oh, oh, everybody loves me. Oh, oh I'm, the, I'm, the, uh, I'm the salt in the room. I'm the, I'm the light and everybody loves me. Oh, oh hey, you don't know. <laughs> They are just waiting for you. <laughs> they are just waiting for that time where <laughs> you make one little mistake where they'll say, ah, we got him, we got him, we got him, we got him. Anyone doing anything worth doing in this world will attract enemies automatically. So don't, God gives you an idea to their concept to be able to start a drink that will become bigger than Coca-Cola. And then you go to Coca-Cola and tell Coca-Cola, oh, Coca-Cola, I've just discovered the best drink that within the next five years is going to be bigger and better than you. And then you think they'll be there and look at you. Ah. When Jesus was born, Herod heard that a new king is born, baby, baby. Herod sent for them to go and look for that baby and kill that baby. He said, what? A new king? Well, some here. Nobody wants to be replaced. Jacob was the best dreamer until Joseph showed up. Jacob had a dream. He saw heaven open. He saw angels ascending and descending. And he was only sleeping on a stone as a pillow. When Jacob had dreams, nobody had ever had that kind of dream. But when his son Joseph showed up, Joseph said, I see, I see 11 stars bowing down to me. Jacob said, what do you mean? I will come and bow down to you. When Joseph told his father his dream, his father said, what? This guy has a dream that is bigger than my dream. So the Bible says that, and Jacob observed him from that day forward. Saul knew that David was anointed king to replace him. What did he do? 
He wanted to kill him. So you be there and say, oh, well, well, So the only thing that's going to make you wiser than your enemies is the command of the Lord. It says your commands are always with me and they make me wiser than my enemies. Verse 99 it says, I have more insight than all my teachers. This is David speaking. He said, I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes. I have more insight. I have more knowledge. I am more sharper than the one who was sharper than me before. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. How many of you have watched Rocky, the Rocky movie series before? The Rocky movie series. Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5. In one of the Rockies, Rocky's um, uh, manager became a boxer and he boxed Rocky. Do you remember that? And he beat Rocky. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do you remember that? Now, and then, oh, you don't remember because you haven't watched Rocky before. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then later on, Rocky had to go and train hard and beat this guy. Okay, go back and watch all the Rocky movies. It says, I have more insight than all my teachers. You see, through constant sharpening, he became better than his teachers. Through constant sharpening, he became better that this is why you have to put pressure on your children to perform. Put pressure on your children. Don't let them rest. We are in a different environment. You see, people can discriminate against you, but they cannot discriminate against knowledge. If you know it, nobody can discriminate against your knowledge. Because that's why Samuel said, after he looked for all the children to anoint and there was none of them, he said, there is one left. His name is David. He is with the sheep. He is on the wilderness. Samuel said, we will not sit down until he comes. In other words, he is the only one that has what it takes. If you have what it takes, people will wait for you to come and show them how to. That's why you and I have to put pressure on our children to perform. Sometimes some children in the area will come and knock and say, oh, can we play? No, my children are practicing. They don't play. There's time for playing, but now they are reading. They are, their head is in their books. They are doing their maths. They are doing their English. Yeah, and we are seeing proof. When we are taking our children to school, one hour drive, one hour back, you want to sleep? No, read. No sleeping. I'm working in the car. You work, you read. No. And then we begin to see results. Teachers started sending emails. She's excelling in this, excelling in that, excelling in that, number one in this. How does it happen? Put pressure. So they are shopping. Are you following what I'm saying? Because others are playing now, but for us, the only thing that will make room for us is our gift. Somebody can go on benefits, but our children are going on no benefits. So how do we get them there? Put pressure on them. They might not like you now, but tomorrow when they are 
in their own private jets, they'll be saying, thank you, daddy. Thank you for putting pressure on me. I bought it myself. Nobody can. Are you following what I'm saying? Sharpen your children. I was telling, I was telling our children two or three days ago, I said, the least you are going to become in this family is a doctor. The least. The least. Because your mom is a pharmacist. That's that's, you have to go above there. That's the least. And I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. You don't know I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Praise God. Because I don't call myself doesn't mean you don't. You know, I don't like titles. So David said, I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statutes. Verse 100, Psalm 119, verse 100. It said, I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have more understanding. I have more understanding. Hallelujah. So to stay sharpen, these are the four things. Number one, it takes steel to sharpen steel, and anything great in this world is built on hard steel. Number two, to be sharpened, you must get closer to hard and disciplined people. Number three, to be sharpened, you have to look for people in your field who are sharper than you. Number four, you must never be satisfied until you become sharper than them. Finally, as we close and we pray, homework, homework, they say, oh, pastor is giving us homework. Yeah, homework. Homework. I'll give you the homework. If you go home and you don't do it, it's your own cup of tea. Number one, which areas in your own personal life do you need to be sharpened in? Which areas in your own personal life do you need to be sharpened in? Two, which areas in your professional life do you need to be sharpened in? Which areas in your professional life do you need to be sharpened in? Three, what tools do you need to get more sharper? What tools do you need to get more sharper? Four, what will it cost you? You want to be sharper than your teachers sharper than those who are sharper than you now it will cost you something what will it cost you friends social media time money etc etc it will cost you something so these are things you have to consider if you want to remain what sharper Did you get all the questions? Did you receive it tonight? Let's give Jesus some praise. (laughs) Hallelujah. All right, let's rise up on our feet. We're going to pray. Praying is part of getting sharpened. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. Are you ready for us to pray? I know we did pray this prayer but I feel so strong that we pray it again. Amen. And I want you to pray this like, like never before. Now, Isaiah chapter 54, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper nor any tongue that rises up against you in judgment it says you shall what condemn for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord amen now 
I have come to realize that whether you like it or not, if you are making impact in any area of your life, like I said, you automatically attract enemies. Isaac started doing exploits in the midst of farming. He was flourishing. Abimelech and his people came against him. He dug a well out of envy. They filled the well with sand. He dug another one out of envy. They filled it again. He dug another one. They filled it again. Now how many wells are you digging that the enemy is filling? That you don't know. And sometimes the devil uses people to throw negative and secret curses at you. On the way. You are in your area, very happy. You are working with your wife, hands, hand in hand. And somebody is just looking at you and saying, Do you think you are the only one who is married? Are you the only one who is married? And they start throwing negative secret curses at you. You drive a nice car, somebody throws secret and negative curses at you. And you wonder, all of a sudden, you were doing well and you started going down. Remember the scripture we read from the beginning? It says, Joseph is a fruitful boy whose branches go over the wall. When you read further, it says the arches have sawed him grievously. His own family, his own members, they were against him. They said, are you the only one? They put him in a pit. Sometimes these secret curses, I call them soulish curses, coming from the heart of people. They don't have to open their mouth. But look at what we have to do. The Bible, you see, when you kill someone, you haven't killed the curse. After Isaac died, Joseph, Jacob still prospered. Isaac only released words, blessing. So that means words don't die until you kill it. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't kill the person. Forget about the person. Praying that the person should die is nothing. Kill the words they have released into your future. That's the key. Kill the words. Some of us are going around with curses from our father and great grandfathers. You know, and most of us, you know, most of us came from a, a cultural background where our fathers married two, three wives, four wives, and all these wives are releasing curses on the children who on the on the children of the other woman. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah, they are dead and gone, but you every time there are cyclical things happening in your life, you're wondering what's happening tonight. We are going to destroy that curse. Tonight, I want you to pray like it's your only breath you have. Everybody must pray seriously. Are you following me? So we're going to pray in this manner. We're going to say, Father, say with me, Father, Father in the name of Jesus name of and by the power of the speaking blood of Jesus, I destroy and condemn every negative curses released into my future destiny secretly by those who hate my progress and my flourishing let their evil desires against me and my family be nullified now in the name of Jesus open your mouth and begin to pray begin to pray pray in the spirit pray pray like never before nullify it cancel that evil decrease those negative curses release into your children's life into the future of your children destroy them destroy them any curses released against this church against this church against the members of this church we nullify them in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus speaks better things the blood speaks better things come on violent the violent taken by force 
take your portion take your portion tonight take what belongs to you take it take it take it take it release the blood release the blood the blood of Jesus speaks the blood of Jesus speaks the blood of Jesus speaks any negative cases release anywhere against my life against my wife against my children against this church against my pastors against my leaders against my members we come against them tonight we destroy them tonight by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus every case is condemned every case is condemned every case is condemned every case is condemned pray like never before pray 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 in the name of Jesus every case every time sensitive case they are destroyed now your marriage will not go into divorce yes somebody in your family divorce but minus you minus you you will not die you will live to declare the glory of God in the name of Jesus your children will not go wayward your children will not go wayward your children will not go wayward reba proske banda yaba zibranda breke teke le rara bronde rebre shata mama katole brende rebe ni mada mama we pine every negative cash every negative cash anyone anywhere hindering the progress of this church hindering our members we destroy those cases we destroy those cases every negative case every negative file anywhere any blackmailing element of the devil we come against them tonight we come against them tonight we come against them tonight
in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. We are living in a country where we should understand this better. This country functions on what we call credit system. Credit system. If you have a good name, anything you require, you get. If you have a bad name, it doesn't matter what money you have, you will not get. Now, how does a negative credit system happen? You are blackmailed. Sometimes they blackmail addresses. There was a time we were praying and, and the Spirit of the Lord ministered to me to talk about that. And somebody in this church said, he didn't know he's working about going about his normal thing not knowing he's been blackmailed blackmailed the police had on his record that he was dealing in drugs somebody in this church they came to his house they on the, it was at the police station he had to go he said no that's not me somebody has used his identity to do all kinds of things and he's been blackmailed I don't know what has been said about you I don't know what has been written about you but there is a blood that speaks better things it is the blood of Jesus it is the blood of Jesus that was released into your destiny by people you know and people you don't know tonight I cancel them by the blood of Jesus I said tonight they are canceled by the blood of Jesus right now I decree the heavens open over you you are a new bloodline. You belong to Jesus. And the blood of Jesus will continue to speak for you better things. Some of you have been stuck up until now. Tonight I've just seen those chains broken. Every chain that has held you back, it is broken. From tonight you'll be going at the speed of the Holy Ghost. At the speed of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. We call it done. We call it done. Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Let's partake of the communion. Yeah, 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 yeah. the devil touched the wrong person he came to the wrong address father we thank you that this communion table is blessed we decree and declare that as we partake of the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ the blood that was shed on the cross for us the body of Christ that was broken for us. As we partake of this mystery tonight, we decree that we are covered. No virus come near us and any of our family members. We decree that our families are exempted. We are exempted. By the blood of the Lamb, we are exempted. By the blood of the Lamb, we are exempted. We decree it so. As we partake of this communion, our system is renewed. Any sickness is destroyed. In Jesus' name. The body of Christ, the blood of Jesus, let's partake prayerfully in Jesus' name.
Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you. Thank you for the blood. The blood is speaking better things for us. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Did you receive it tonight? Did you receive it tonight? Did you receive it tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Well, we've come to the end of the service. Uh, tomorrow, we start half seven on the dot, but we are here from half six to make sure everything is in place. Amen. Invite someone tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go deeper tomorrow. Amen. And I'm telling you, there are awesome things. I just pray that God will give us the time to be able to share as much as we can. But by the time we live here, God will do exploits in our lives. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen. The Lord give you peace on every side. May the Lord cover your going in and your coming out. You are covered by the precious blood of Jesus. You are protected from your going in and your coming out. No weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Every negative decrease in your life is condemned from tonight. From tonight, I decree that you are walking in the newness of Christ. From tonight, you begin to experience unprecedented testimonies. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Have a glorious night. We'll see you tomorrow.